this is my 3d printer uh, it cost me about hundred and eighty dollars on Amazon and I've had it about a year it's shockingly good but recently I've been noticing some serious deterioration in the quality of the prints so today's lesson is going to be replacing the extruder mechanism if you need to do the same or you just want to know how it works in there keep watching so I've had this printer for just over a year and I would guess that I've run through about 20 kilograms of filament. Things had been getting worse and worse until recently when I was pumping out a nerd load of Gridfinity holders for my new drawers. And things just kind of ground to a halt and the prints became unusable. The problem lies here in the extruder. There's a common problem with Ender 3s where the plastic extruder arm that comes stock tends to crack and you lose tension on the spring. This is actually not that problem though. My problem is that the knurled knob that pushes the filament is ground down to smooth. I'm pretty sure what happened here is that there was a tangle in the filament on the roll. So the knob was spinning and rubbing up against the filament instead of pushing it. And that just wore the knob down to nothing. So now that I have the stepper motor and the extruder off, you can see here how badly worn down the knurled knob is that's on the stepper motor. So that is really what needs to be replaced, but since I had to order the stuff uh, and I have it all taken apart, I may as well do it all. So this is the kit I got on Amazon. I think it was about 17 or 18 bucks. I'll put a link in the description below. It's high quality, it's made by Creality, so it's, uh, the real deal came with silicon sock replacements and bed springs just as a bonus which is really nice of them uh, it also has a bowden tube which is good the pieces you need to assemble the extruder which is obviously very important uh, and this is the knurled knob you can see how different this one is from the one that i'm replacing so it seems like a good idea um, it took me a few tries to get the original knob off. It's a press fit on there. I don't have a gear puller for this kind of thing. Um, I tried so the small vice grips and then I tried the big vice grips and then I tried some screwdrivers with the big vice grips and then eventually I just gave up and brought it into the shop where I could uh, put it into the real vice and tighten it down and then with a couple of screwdrivers it just popped off really easy at this point. So then I can press the new one on. This one has a grub screw on it, but this motor shaft doesn't have a flat. So um, the press fit was really tight. I'm not worried about it slipping. And uh, I'll just tighten down that grub screw because I guess why not? But I don't think it's gonna do much good if there's no flat on the motor shaft. Okay, so we'll start with the extruder arm which the instructions refer to as the clip. Into that, I will drop the extrusion pin and that's held in with an M3 by 18 millimeter screw. Then the bearing is mounted right onto the arm with a lock washer and an M4 screw that we can screw right into place here. And that bearing spins freely, which is nice. And finally, there's this M3 by 10 millimeter screw that is just here to hold the spring in place when the arm's on the body. And with that, the arm is done. So then onto the body, I can screw the Bowden cable clamp on, and then this M4 screw here is the tension adjustment for the spring. So that goes into the body, and then this piece fits on the other end of it just loosely so that it's held in place by the spring once the arm is attached, which we'll see here in a second.
And with that, the assembly is all ready to get remounted onto the printer. Okay, so now I can mount the stepper motor back onto the printer, making sure that the cable is facing the right way so I can run the cables cleanly once it's all back together and put the body right on top on the other side of this mounting plate and just go through the first three screws and get them attached. As you can see, I have to remove this bolt that's used to adjust the spring tension just so that I can access the screw hole that's underneath it, uh, but that's not a big deal. I can just pop that screw in, tighten it up, and then put the tension adjustment screw right back in where it was. Then I can put the arm on and just put the spring in between the two pieces where it goes. And I just have to wiggle around until I find the spot for that screw. And then I can come in and tighten it up. Since the lead screw is right there, this is one of those situations where these Allen keys that have the spherical ends on them come in super handy it's i don't this would have been a real pain in the ass if i had had to do it with a normal allen key okay so i'm going to replace the bowden cable on this so i'll just remove the old one get rid of those zip ties um, hold up the gantry uh, so that i can work on that Bowden cable clamp that's on the hot end end and get that off. And then the next thing I need to do is cut the new Bowden cable down to the same length as the old Bowden cable so uh, it's not too messy. Uh, I think it's a good idea to change this Bowden cable even though I haven't noticed any problems with mine but while I have everything taken apart it can't hurt. These things wear out in time and they get dirty and gunked up and you can see the end is kind of burnt and uh, it's just uh, nice to have a new one, I think. So I'll pull off the clamp that was on the hot end end of this cable, which seems to be in perfectly good shape and I'll reuse that on the new cable. So now I'll take off the fan shroud on the hot end uh, so that I can replace this crummy old silicon sock that's on here. They sent me a new one along with the extruder, so I'm going to use it because it's in much nicer shape than the old one. I'll put that right back on there. No big deal. And then I'll reattach the fan shroud. While I'm in here, I'm noticing that there's a lot of wiggle in this X axis. So I think this is a good opportunity to tighten that up. This process is really easy. You get the right sized wrench or spanner and you just turn the eccentric nut that's on the wheel that's by itself. There's three wheels. There's two on one side and one on the other side the one that's by itself has the eccentric nut. So you just get that so that it runs smoothly, but there's no wiggle. So the last step in this process is to adjust the E steps. Now that I changed the extruder, the new gear is going to push at a different rate than the old gear. So I need to tell the printer what that is. So first I'll heat up the nozzle just so that I can extrude without the printer complaining that it's not preheated. And then I'll feed a little bit of filament in so that I can extrude it through. It's much easier to feed the filament in with the Bowden cable in place. So 
I'll do that and then I'll just draw it back and clip it off right at the edge of the Bowden cable clamp. So now I can go and in the interface on the Ender 3, just extrude 100 millimeters of filament. And I can cut that off right at the end of the Bowden cable clamp at the same place that I cut off the front. So I'm cutting off exactly the amount that was extruded. I'll then take it over and use this sophisticated method to straighten it out so I can get a measurement on it to see how long that was. And this comes out at 96.2. Then I'll do that two more times and write those down. And I'll take the average of those numbers to use in my calculation that I use for the E-steps. Okay, so back in the Ender 3 interface, this is where I'm gonna use that number. I'm gonna go into the configuration. This version of Marlin has it here. Different versions are in different places, so you'll have to figure that out. And where we see E steps per millimeter, the number is 95. So right now it's extruding 95 steps for each millimeter of filament. So those 95 steps times the 100 millimeters that we extruded means that we extruded 9,500 steps. We divide that by our 99.3 millimeters and we get the actual number of steps that we need to extrude. So we go back in, back to those settings, steps per millimeter, and we just adjust this number to the number we calculated, which is 95.7. And with that, I can put the Bowden cable back in. I can tidy things up with a few zip ties and move the printer back into its home. So with all that stuff done, the new extruder, the Bowden cable, um, adjusting the E steps and tightening up the X axis, the printer's in really great shape. It's running well, the prints are clean. There's no more under extrusion problems and I'm really happy with it. I hope this helps you out and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.